In this tutorial, we are going to cover the basics of filling objects. That is, creating objects and then filling them in so that the laser completely colors them in complete or burns them in complete on your part. Uh, this can apply to uh, multiple types of objects, such as graphics, as well as all text. Now, by default in MiniLace Pro, when we create a new graphical object or a new text string, those objects are not filled. They are simply outlines of those objects, which means that the laser will process them uh, as an outline, and that outline is equal to one stroke of the laser beam. So as you can see on the screen here, we do have a square object created. And we're going to use a square today because it's very, very easy um, to explain and show uh, utilizing the square how the different fill settings affect the object. Now, the square is currently not filled. So as the laser were to draw this square in its current state, this outline of the square object would be equal again to one pass of the laser beam. So the laser would come up, over, down, and back, and that would draw the complete square. So if we want to fill the square, the first thing we have to do is select it. We're going to come over here to our tab system, as we've discussed previously, and we're going to come over to fill. Now, under fill, we have a few different options to select. We have single line, cross line, and triple line. What that means is, quite simply, is the laser going to use one pass through, two pass throughs, or three pass throughs in order to fill in the entire object? So if we were single line, the laser would go back and forth and sweep across the square to burn in the square on your part one single time. If we had it on cross lines, it would do that operation twice. If we had it on triple lines, it would do this operation three times. Okay, so for right now, we're going to use single line operation. There are several settings that you can now see here that are listed under the fill type once we choose. And today we're only going to talk about a few. We're going to ignore fill option, fill by. We're also going to ignore fill tolerance. Those are advanced uh, fill options that are not uh, used on the everyday marking application. If you do want some further explanation into how those can affect your fill and how those operate, you can read your MiniLays Pro software manual and it does have a section in there uh, regarding fill and it talks a little bit more about these advanced operations. We're just going to talk about the, the, the most important, uh, the two most important or three most important you could say are fill type again. We're going to talk about fill angle and fill space. We're also going to talk about not engrave path and send path first, which are two other options you can see. Uh, if we go to uh, stretch this out a little bit, we can see not engrave path. All right, so let's bring this back over. And we've got fill angle by default set at zero. What is the fill angle? It's very simple. That is the angle uh, relative to the X axis, which is the axis running from left to right on your screen and left to right as you look into your mini lay system. The, the fill angle is the angle relative to that axis. So at zero, that means we're at zero degrees to our X axis, which means we will follow the same path. The laser will sweep back and forth just as you see my mouse moving to fill in this object. And it'll do that till the object is filled. Then it will come back and do the outline. Now the software will always process by default the fill first and the outline second. This is because we always want to come back after we do our fill and make a nice clean outline so that we have crisp, sharp edges to our mark and that the mark is of a very high quality. I'm going to run the simulator during this tutorial to show you what the fill would look like. So you'll see the simulator pop up and you're going to see a filled square at zero degrees. Now as you watch your screen, you see from left to right the sweeping motion of the square, the outline, and then it is done. If we were to change this fill angle to 90, it's going to go at 90 degrees relative to the x-axis, which means now it's going to go vertical up and down on the screen, and it's going to go back and forth in front of you as you look into your mini lays system. I'll show you that. As you can see, top to bottom, 90 degrees relative to zero. 
And for one final example, we'll show you 45. There's the 45 degree. Now we can program this at any angle that we choose from 0 to 360. Okay, so we're going to come back to fill angle, but let's move on now that you understand that concept and go to fill space. Fill space is very simple as well. It is simply the distance that the laser beam is going to move before it makes another pass across the object in order to fill it in. Uh, if you uh, imagine um, the laser beam traveling back and forth, as it makes each subsequent sweep across this square to fill, it has to move up a little bit, come over, move up, come over, move up, and come over. Therefore, the fill space is actually a distance, and that is the distance between each line as this object is filled in. It's very similar to mowing your grass. If you were to mow your grass and turn the corner very tightly each time you go across your lawn and overlap, you will get a very clean, even cut. The same goes for fill. The lower the fill space, the lower the distance between each pass of the laser beam. Therefore, at lower numbers, your laser beam begins to overlap as it fills in an object, and you get a very even, nice appearance to your mark. I'm going to show you what happens if we go away from point 1 up to 1 millimeter spacing when I run this simulator so you can see the actual distance between the lines. I'm just going to make the square a little bit larger. So let's go ahead and watch this in the simulator. We're at 45. You can see the distance between the lines. Now it's doing the outline. And let's go back to 0, get a little bit of a better view. And now you can see the true spacing. Obviously, that is going to leave areas of our part untouched, which we do not want. Therefore, we are going to come back here and lower this. If we take this down to 0 0.04 instead, which is a much tighter or much smaller distance for the beam to travel, you will see now that when we run our simulator, the overlap of the beam is much tighter. And therefore, on our part, we will have a much greater uh, quality and consistency to our filled mark. Now subsequently, because the distance between each sweep of the beam is closer, the time will uh, to create the mark will increase as well. So that's something you have to keep in mind. Now for time purposes, I'm going to increase this back to one. But I am going to show you now the different fill types. So if we go from single to cross, you're going to see that it goes at the first angle, which is zero. And then on the second passage, because it is cross, it's going to do it twice. It is going to switch angles. and It's going to come at 90. So we're going to watch that. We're going to go at zero. We're going to come back at 90. And then if we go to triple, you're going to see three different angles as well, but this time you're going to see 0, 45, and negative 45. That's because the system is automatically going to approach at a different angle each time. And what that does is allows you to get a very, very even coverage over your part because you're going at it from two directions. 0, we're going to come at 45, then we're going to go at a negative 45. And you can see we really, even at one millimeter spacing, have covered a lot of ground. So you can imagine as you lower that fill space distance down and get that laser beam overlapping that you can really create a very consistent burn with your filled uh, text or logos or whatever it is that you're marking. Now, the last thing we want to discuss is the not engraved path and send path first. These are very simple and these are items that you're probably not going to use very often. I recommend most people use these default settings, but not engraved path means that the object will simply fill only. So just to show you, if I turn this on, it's only going to process the fill and it will do no outline. When the fill is done, it will stop. If we were to send the path first, then it's going to do the outline first and the fill second. So you see the outline, then we get the fill. 
So it's just a couple advanced operations. Now, the last thing that we really want you to understand about fill is that it is in very important to pay close attention to how these fill settings are working in conjunction with your laser settings. And in your MiniLase Pro software manual, there is a chart available that discusses fill settings and recommendations for different materials and types of marks that you wish to achieve. Because getting the ideal results on specific materials and getting the types of marks that you require on those materials, you have to have the right combination of fill and you have to have the right laser settings. All these things work in conjunction to give you the best mark possible. And as you progress through your mini lay system training and you get better at running it and start to get a deeper understanding of fill settings and laser settings, you'll be able to master taking a new part, creating a program from scratch and quickly setting your settings up in order to have the best final outcome as possible.